Hey ladies, welcome back to my channel, Parenting with Purpose. I'm Christian Galloway. And today I want to talk to you about throwing your weight to the side. All right. So oftentimes when I think about as we throw our weight to the side, uh, I often think about when the time that I decided to enlist in the military. So when I decided to enlist in the military, I spoke with some recruiters. I also spoke with a cousin of mine. And between, between those few people, I was told about the different exercises that were required uh, of us uh, in basic training. And so at that time, you know, in the military, for the Navy specifically, uh, it was a requirement for us to run a mile and a half under 15 minutes. At the time, it was, it, it was a lot for me because I hadn't been previously active. Like I wasn't working out, I wasn't really, you know, running or anything like that. So I decided now was the time for me to start preparing, right? I had a maybe a month or two, I think it was about a month before I needed to leave. So I wanted to take that time to prepare. So every morning I would get up and there was, you know, I would walk to the neighborhood park and, you know, we would see different uh, walkers, other runners, you even seen parents with their strollers. And so I would just walk over to the neighborhood park and I would go ahead and just get to, get to jogging. I wanted to condition myself, um, before going to the military. I didn't want my first time running, you know, my first time to begin running was while I was in basic training. That was not going to be good for any of us. <laughs> so I decided to I decided to start running and every morning for a good maybe three weeks I was starting to find my rhythm. Well, I don't know about you, but when you find a new hobby or uh, a new sport that you're really getting into, you're really enjoying. For me, I wanted to go to the store and I wanted to see what else I can add on to, you know, this new hobby that I had. And so I remember going to the store and purchasing a pedometer because at the time our phones were not tracking um, the mileage neither the time and so I wanted to start tracking myself but then I also wanted to uh, buy some ankle weights because I really I started getting into it and I wanted to train myself a little bit more so that next morning I wake up all excited because now I get to have my pedometer I get to track myself and I I didn't start the ankle weights right away, but I did start tracking myself. So I want to say maybe like a couple days into it, I'm running, tracking myself, and I'm starting to see, okay, I'm under 15 minutes. Now I wanted to add the ankle weights. I started adding the ankle weights. And the day that I decided to, to try the ankle weights, it didn't take me long to realize, I, to, to feel the, the resistance from these ankle weights. So... I continue running because I knew their ankle weights for a reason, but I continued to run with the ankle weights. Well, about a mile into my run, I look down to, you know, track myself. Where am I at with time and mileage? Right. And I noticed that more time had passed. And I also noticed that my legs were super heavy. Okay. To the point where it was slowing me down. I was using more energy because I had to carry the weight while running. And so it was, it was more time that was passing. I didn't have much time left because remember, I had to be under the 15 minute window. So what I did was I stopped long enough, took the weights off and I started running again. And when I say immediately, I noticed that I had a second win. I was able to inhale much more oxygen um, my strides were longer. I was running faster. I had more oxygen and overall I was just running faster. Now I share this story with you because while I was running to condition myself and prepare for basic training, there's a race that we are all running so that towards the end, we can hear those words, job well done, my good and faithful servant. So that's what I want to talk to you about today is this race that we are running. And there's a scripture that I want to highlight to you, and it comes from Hebrews chapter 12, 
verses one through two. I'm gonna try to keep this video short as much as possible, but I do, if you just bear with me, I wanna break it down for you as much as possible. So in Hebrews chapter 12, verses one through two, it says, therefore, since we also have such a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Okay, so the great cloud of witnesses that uh, the first verse is talking about, it actually highlights all the names or the majority of the names in Hebrews chapter 11. And basically these are the names of people that God has approved because of their faith. They've conquered so much. They've accomplished so much because of their faith. And they mention names like Abel, Enoch, Noah, Sarah. Abraham, uh, Moses, it even br uh, briefly mentions people like uh, Gideon and Barak, uh, Samuel and David. And so many of the prophets, because of their faith, they've conquered so much. Okay, so that's the great cloud of witnesses that we have before us. These are not perfect people. When you go and read about, you know, how God used them, they were not perfect individuals. So if you're looking for, if you think that you have to be perfect or that you have to be, uh, you know, just this perfect person, you don't have to be. However, the scripture does say, let us lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us. So when it talks about the hindrance, I want you to think about what is hindering you from moving forward in life. OK, what is hindering you from moving forward? What is holding you back? Is there something that is that has your your eyes, your attention? Right. Um, is there something that is blocking you from moving to your next? Because God is ready to bless us. But is there something that maybe you're struggling with that is hindering you from progressing and moving forward in life? Maybe it is a. Um, Maybe it's an addiction, right, to alcohol or some sort of drug. Maybe it's an addiction to sex or um, gossip. Maybe it's envy, okay? Uh, is it unforgiveness? You know, I've done a lot of videos on unforgiveness um, because that's one of the areas that God really had to help me in is unforgiveness. Um, could it be unforgiveness, you holding on to something that someone said or did or maybe they didn't do um, and it's hindering you from moving forward? OK, is it uh, is it stubbornness like it just has to be your way or the highway like you're not budging? Right. Because you have it in your mind that it needs to be a certain way and it has to be that way or else it's just not going to happen at all. Are you being stubborn? OK, so what is hindering you from moving forward? The Bible says the sin that so easily ensnares us. The word ensnares mean uh, to catch in or to trap. Right. There are some images like there are two images that comes to mind. And the first one that comes to mind is think of a, a rubber band ball. Right. You see a rubber band ball. I don't know how they started and I'm not going to take time <laughs> to try to unravel it either. But you see a rubber band ball and all you see is the different color rubber bands. Right. I don't know how long it would take to unravel it, but it's basically entangled. All of these rubber bands are entangled in one another. OK, think of. Um, many of us have walked outside and not one time did you see it coming, but you walked into a spider web. You only know because you feel it. You might feel it on your face and you're thinking it's just on your face. So you're trying to, you know, clear your, your sight, trying to clear it off your face. But then as you keep trying to move forward, 
Now you feel it. Maybe it's on your arm. Okay. And so you might be looking crazy to some other people because all they see is you just trying to get something off you and you're trying to move your face, but you didn't see it. You just walk into it. Okay. And it's just like with sin. Maybe it's, let's say, let's use, um, drugs for an example. You started to, let's say you started off, you know, just smoking a cigarette or maybe you started smoking weed and eventually you don't get the same high that you used to when you first started out. Well, you decide to try something stronger. And so over time, you know, you're smoking whatever that is to, or doing whatever that is to get a, a stronger high. And over time, it's not working anymore. So now you want something even stronger because you're just trying to top the last high, right? And one day you look up and you don't realize how you got there. You look at yourself in a mirror. You can't even, you hardly recognize yourself. You're not the same person that you used to. You're not even in the same environment that you used to be in. And you don't know how you got there, but it, in, it, it entangled you. Right. You find yourself in the trap because of that sin. It says the sin that so easily ensnares us. It happens to all of us. It can happen with an addiction to drugs, alcohol, sex, gossiping. Oh, well, I'm just talking about the person. And yeah, it might be true, but God never talked. God never gave us permission to sit up there and gossip about somebody because the same tongue that we use to bless you know, to bless others or to speak scripture is the same tongue that we're using to talk about somebody and, you know, just kind of talk down on that person or ruin their, uh, their reputation, right? God can't bless that. So it's talking about the sin that so easily ensnares us. Then, so after we, after this, the author wants us to lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us, now he shifts our focus and he's saying, let us run with endurance, the race that lies before us. Okay. Remember once I took off the ankle weights, I had a second win. I was able to take in more oxygen. I got my stride back. I was able to run faster, right? And I was able to uh, basically make up for the time that I had lost with the ankle weights on all because I took the ankle weights off. All right. So lay aside every hindrance and the sin that so easily ensnares us so we can run with endurance, the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus. It's going to be Jesus that coaches us through it. It's going to be him that helps us through it. Right. You don't have to do you don't have to walk this journey uh, or run this race by yourself. OK, uh, it says Jesus, who is the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. He's the pioneer because he's the first one to do it. OK, G uh, God wrapped himself in flesh as his son, Jesus Christ. And when Jesus came, he became the example that we needed. OK, so he was a man who knew no sin but became our sin. Okay. So that we can live and live in abundance. He's the pioneer and the perfecter, which means he completes our fate. Okay. So there's a scripture that talks about he who has begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion to the day of Jesus Christ. Like I said, it's going to be Jesus. When we keep our eyes on Jesus, he's the one that's going to coach us through this journey, through this race. Okay. Um, as a believer, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives in us. So if the same spirit that lives, uh, the same spirit that rose, uh, that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that lives in us. He's also the same spirit that can literally bring our mortal bodies to life or bring life to our mortal bodies. Okay. Then the scripture says, for the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Another way of saying that is he endured the cross because he knew of the joy that lays before him. 
he, despite the shame that he endured, right? Despite the shame that he had to, um, that he experienced, he knew once I endured, once I get to the cross, I can, I'm going to experience joy because I'm going to sit at the right hand of my father in heaven. All right. So that's why we have to push. That's why in some, uh, some of the other versions of the Bible, it talks about, instead of saying endurance, it says persevere. Okay. We have to persevere. And it comes to just like when I was, uh, running, getting up every morning to run. Okay. I'm pretty sure that I probably look a little bit crazy when I first started off running, okay, because I wasn't used to running, all right? I would have to stop and pick up running again. I would be out of breath, okay? But over time, I knew if I, because I kept my eyes on the prize, when I get to basic training, I am going to be ready to run that mile and a half. I won't have to start from scratch, okay? So I kept my eyes on the prize. Let me condition myself now. Let me wake up every morning and stay consistent. Let me, you know, focus on my breathing. Let me focus on what's stopping me from running faster. Let me understand, okay, if I wear these weights, it's going to train me a little bit more. But when I take those weights off, because it's stopping me, it's hindering me, it's slowing me down. When I take those weights off, I'm able to get my second win. I'm able to get my stride back. I'm able to run faster. I'm able to breathe more, breathe better, and get more oxygen in. But I'm keeping my eyes on the prize. All right? And sure enough, when I got to boot camp, I didn't have a problem passing the test. Under, and I was actually under the 15-minute mark, okay, because I kept my eye on the prize. So it's saying... For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. It didn't feel good, and it wasn't easy. But Jesus kept his eye on the prize. He had you in mind when he knew that he was going to that cross. Every sin that we have, have you know, done and will do, because we're not perfect, but every sin has already been paid for. And Jesus knew that once he gets to the cross, I'm going to endure all this pain. I'm going to endure all this shame, right? But I'm having who I'm going to have, I have all my children's names in my mind. So it's already paid for. Okay. And so he knew, let me get to this cross and I'm going to be at I'm going to be at peace. I'm going to have joy because I'm sitting with my father in heaven. Whatever it is that you are that's maybe hindering you or slowing you down from progressing in life. All right. God is saying, let it like lay it to the side. And I think oftentimes because as I was studying and just talking with God and meditating on this, I came to the realization I think sometimes we, as human beings, because we have a limited view, um, I think sometimes we, we think that we have to sin. Um, like, it's almost like there's this excuse that we make. Well, I'm not perfect, and, you know, it's hard, so I'm trying. But we, if we think about it, we really don't have to sin. Yes, we're not perfect. But we really don't have to sin because Jesus already paid for it. If we get it into our minds, I don't have to have sex before marriage. That's not the way that God intended for it. So I'm going to make it up in my mind already that I'm not going to have sex before marriage. Right? Um, I'm going to make it up in my mind. I'm not going to gossip about people. I'm going to use my mouth to build people up, not tear them down right? You don't have to sin. You don't have to. And so as you bring it to Jesus, as you bring it up to God in prayer, you can ask him to coach you through it because you are wanting to lay aside every hindrance and every sin that so easily traps you, ensnares you, entangles you, right? You have a race to run. And I don't know about you, but we don't have time. I don't have time. And I know for a fact I'm going to help you speak for yourself. We don't have time 
to sit up there and constantly go in the same cycles with the same sin when there's a race to be uh, to finish strong. Okay, so the whole point here is to throw unnecessary weight to the side. Other versions of the Bible, I think it's the Amplified version that actually calls it um, throw, throw away your or lay aside your unnecessary weight that lets you know you don't have to carry that weight. It's unnecessary. So throw it all away is not helping you, it's not serving you, you're not progressing in life. And it's got you not this far, really. You're not going far with it. You're just staying stuck in the same place. Lay it to the side so that you can get your second win and continue running this race because we will finish strong. We will hear, the, hear those words where Jesus says, job well done, my good and faithful servant. Okay, so I just wanted to share some some words of encouragement with you to lay aside every weight, lay aside every hindrance. Okay, and um, that's all I have for you today. I hope that this message has blessed you, that it has encouraged you um, to you know take a step in moving forward and laying aside whatever is hindering you um, from moving forward. And that's all. That's all I have for you. Go ahead like this what is it <laughs> click the like button subscribe and comment down below uh, i would love to hear what your thoughts are or with what it is that you are laying to the side um, and i will see you all in the next video enjoy your weekend